and welcome to my RC workshop. On the next few videos, I will be showing you how do I tackle the build of my latest project, the Aspect 300 from Goldwing RC. Prior to initialize a project, I plan thoroughly the sequence of builds in order to come up with an effective process. Just like in real aviation, in which at every step of the assemble, the assembler will need to have all the parts that he needs to build on that section for that given moment in time. For this to happen, I do an extensive research of all the parts that I will need prior I start the project. Also, prior I order the main airframe kit. This will ensure me that I will have all the parts that I need for that precise moment in order to have an effective process over the installation and build. I also analyze the model characteristics, such as the wing area, the size, the weight, etc. I also create and draw in a piece of paper, the electronic schematics that I will apply on the model. That will help me in the future in order to have better guidance in what electronics and where the electronics will go on the model. I have decided and divided the main airframe piece in three sections and will tackle them one at a time. Section 1 will be the front section. Section 2 will be the middle section and Section 3 that will be the tail. Finally, I will have the wings and the horizontal stabilizer and other additional steps in order to finalize the building. introduction and on this first video I will cover section 1. Section 1 will have torque box and firewall, engine, the trim and installation, the exhaust, trim, the cowl, trim, engine and electronics and control. Hope you enjoy. Although the torque box come reinforced from factory, I have decided to reinforce it a little bit more with fiberglass. Therefore, I will apply fiberglass in the whole torque box. For that, I have removed the screws and the bolts, and I will use now the template to drill the holes for the engine. I will also apply the same inside in order to reinforce it a bit more. So you will notice that I already have removed the screws and the bolts. Prior to applying the fiberglass, I will need to sand all the torque box with the sandpaper and the firewall. After a few hours of dealing with the fiberglass, I have finalized the work. I have reinforced the torque box and the firewall. I also have added some stripes of carbon fiber. It will create some additional strength to the torque box. Not pretty, but it will serve the need. Now with the fiberglass in place, I will need just to open the holes for the screws up front and on the side and in here and opening the holes for the engine spacers. Now with the holes made and the engine just pointed at the torque box, I will highlight how I will do my hole for the throttle rod. So basically it's like this. I will 
have the throttle lever just in this position. Then I just grab some, some wire and point it at the wire more or less around on the firewall where I know that my rod for the throttle will pass through. Then I just take out the hand from the lever and with the pen I will just highlight where it will be marked. So I know now that the place where I need to make the hole will be something around this area here. So this is how I do my tweak on the throttle rod. And this is the final result with a rod passing through the firewall, the hole made and already connected. And this is my final assembly of the engine. So I have my screws for the reinforcement on the torque box put it in. I have decided to replace them by exotype screws. I have my spacers. As you can see there, the spacers are already properly in place. I have my hole for the rod on the throttle lever. And I already have temporarily placed here a rod for the choke down. So, and I even have installed the exhaust muffler to see where it goes to in order to trim out the canister. On this airplane I have decided to use a canister muffler. For that I have opened two holes on the belly of the airplane. This one here will be for the exhaust tube and that one there will be for the cooling system. One of the things that you need to ensure for these kind of mufflers is that you need to ensure that they have an effective cooling system. Otherwise, you may end up by having a failure of the canister if the temperature reaches a high value. The canister will be supported by that ring that I will in some way will glue and will put here just a little pieces of wood in order to have that piece glued. As you can see, I have placed the pieces of wood just for your reference. That will be the place that I will glue them in. Now my next step will be to trim the engine cowling. In order to have an effective cooling system, not only for the engine but also for the canister, I will need to open several holes on the fiberglass cowling that comes available with the airplane. For that I use a very simple method. I just grab a little piece of paper and place it just glued on the airplane. So I have just placed the paper above the engine and now I just need to turn the airplane upside down and mark the head of the engine on that little piece of paper. Creating some alignment marks on the cowling. So I notice that once the ten plate is put in place, that nice little feature up front, it seems that will go away. So now my next step will be to mark on the cowling where the hole will be made. Now as you can see, I have my cowling marked in order to start creating the hole. I will do it step by step, so I would like to at least stay with this uh, nice feature here up front, but I will need to start by opening a hole and go from there. And here it is, another stage on the process in order to open a hole. So basically on the marks I just, just did 
small holes and now I'm going to cut them all and see how the cowling will fit for the first time on the airplane. And here it is, the hole is open. Now I just need to go by steps and try and try and trim and try until I have the perfect hole made for the engine head. As you can see for the first trial it's not bad, although I still have a very decent gap here on the back. So I will need to remove some more material here up front. So which is a shame because this little nice feature and this piece here will go away. Well, I need to keep the engine cool, so that's what I need to do. After a few minutes of sanding and trimming, this is the final result. During the process I noticed that my exhaust was touching the cowling so I needed to open a hole in order to have some more clearance. The little piece up front unfortunately was gone as I have specified previously. Now I have a generous hole with a nice airflow to the engine head. Also you will notice the gap between the nose cone and the cowling, perfect in my view. Now I just need to open the little holes here in order to increase the airflow to the canister. In order to ensure an effective airflow to cool the canister, I will need to open a few holes here on the bottom of my cowling. So, on the computer I have drawn this little piece of template. With it, I'm going to mark here on the cowling two in one side and two on the other side. This will allow an effective airflow to the exhaust which then will exit from this hole and from this one here. After drilling and sanding for almost three hours, this is the final work on the cowling. With the holes all open, I will ensure an effective airflow for cooling. The airframe has built it in two pieces of wood with two blind nuts. This will serve the purpose of securing properly the cowling. This is how I do my mark. Now my next step will be to install the throttle servo mount support. So this support comes with a kit in four pieces and I just assembled and glued it. I will install this support inside the engine torque box around this area here. And this is the final assemble for the throttle servo mount. Now that the engine and the cowling are done, it's time to install the electronics related with the engine. For the throttle servo I will be using a Bluebird 661 DMG high speed servo and the ignition will be an electronic ignition from the LE. Will be fed at 6 volts by a BEC which then will be connected by a LiPo, a 2S LiPo with 1600 milliamps. And this is the final installation. I have the ignition box already installed and the servo already connected. <laughs> 